Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to automate the BPM in Reactor and because automating the BPM is not going to create a sound on its own and because Ultra Loop is pretty awesome I'm just going to make a sample project using this concept with Ultra Loop and it's going to sound a little something like this If you guys like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor content every week. All right, so starting with a normal copy of Ultra Loop here, the first thing we want to do is go into the file menu and select the OSC settings option. And we want to click the OSC activate button at the top here. And by default, we'll start receiving OSC messages on port 10,000, which is fine. We can just leave it there. So next, we want to scroll over to the OSC Send tab and create a new target to send to. We want to make sure the port that we're sending to is the same as the port that we're receiving at. And we also need to make sure that we're sending to the proper IP address. So by default, it's just loading in this long string of X's here, which I assumed would just automatically um, default to our IP address. But if you actually enter a value into this table here, you'll see that it's actually just going to be a bunch of zeros. So to get your IP address, simply go back to the OSC receive tab and copy the number there into the OSC send tab. And once we have the IP address and the ports, identical numbers on both the OSC receive and the OSC send page, we can use the test button at the bottom here to make sure that we're actually going to be able to send data from point A to point B. And when we click it, you see in the OSC monitor in the upper right hand corner here that we are both sending an OSC message out and receiving one at the input. So basically, we've just created a circular OSC connection that will allow us to send messages to Reactor to control aspects of the interface that we normally are unable to control um, without using an external device of some kind. And finally, let's go over to the OSC Sync tab. And we want to make sure that we have the Enable Sync as Slave option selected. And the sync type is a time sync. And then we'll just select our um, OSC destination uh, from the time sync menu here. And that's it. And finally, we can start jumping into the structure and um, making our uh, BPM envelope that I was showing you earlier. So I'm going to create this in a new instrument and if we select an empty instrument it's going to create a default instrument with one voice that's monophonic which is what we want so I'm going to choose that option. And to start let's just create a knob that can control the, D the BPM on its own. So we'll give this a range from you know something reasonable like 40 to 200 and to control the BPM with it, go into the terminal menu and select the OSC send module and connect it to the knob. And make sure you set the OSC send to always active. And we need to edit the destination for the OSC send module. So go into the properties and the connect tab. And for the address pattern, we want to enter underscore underscore BPM and with the add target menu we want to select the OSC port that we created earlier and now you see that our knob can control the BPM in reactor. Alright so let's create a structure to have an envelope modulate the BPM over time. To do this, I'm going to use a 4-ramp envelope, which I like for a variety of reasons. 
uh, mostly because it has a linear attack and release time and because we can set the levels to be any value that we want which we can't really do very well with some of the other audio envelopes in Reactor. So let's set up the levels first and I want the levels to be equal to anywhere from negative BPM to positive BPM. So I'm just going to multiply the BPM knob by another knob ranging from negative 1 to 1. And I'm going to use these to control all of the levels of the envelope. So even though we're using the 4 ramp envelope here, we're really only going to use stages, the attack stage and the release stage. And the other stages won't do anything at all. So we're going to end up adding the output of this envelope here to the BPM value itself. And that way we'll take whatever our base BPM value is and we'll either use the envelope to double it or to bring it all the way down almost to zero. So let's connect the gate to the envelope. I'm going to use a compare module to make sure that the gate is always on and that way the envelope is always going to have um, its fullest depth possible. And uh, you can just get rid of the compare module if you want to use um, velocity to modulate the depth, depth of the envelope. And because our envelope is outputting an audio stream and the OSC send module uses events, we need to use an A to E module to translate our audio into events. And the event stream that comes out of there is going to have a lot of duplicate values, especially when the envelope is off, it's just going to constantly be sending zeros. So we're just going to use a step filter to uh, filter out all the unnecessary events. And when we're done doing that, we can add the output of the envelope to the BPM value and send the sum directly to the OSC send module. So let's hop up to the panel view and unlock the panel, rearrange our knobs here. And then we can check to make sure that I've done everything correctly. And it's good to turn the attack and release times on this up a little bit since we're translating the audio into events. If there's a really fast um, attack or release time, you won't really be able to hear it at all. So an attack time of 60 corresponds to an attack length of one second. So somewhere around there is usually pretty good to get the full effect. All right, so once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. If you guys like this video, please check out our website, and I'll be back with another Reactor video next week.